Hi, I'm Kevin Hildebrand. In this video, I'll share some ideas to add variety to hymn introductions. The purpose of a hymn introduction is to state the tune clearly, establish the tempo, and to prepare the congregation for the singing of the hymn. Most of the time, we'll typically play through the entire hymn tune in our hymn introduction, especially for a hymn that may be less familiar than others. But with a hymn that's very familiar, or for instance, a hymn that might be printed in a congregational worship folder, or at the end of the service when the congregation is standing and prepared to sing, we may want to play only a portion of the hymn. And here's some ideas of how we might accomplish that. First of all, we might want to play just the first phrase of a hymn, such as, Joy to the World. That's a very familiar hymn, and a short introduction like that might be all that's required to get the congregation ready to go. On the other side, perhaps we could play only the last portion of a hymn. Maybe a hymn like, Lord of Glory, You Have Bought Us. We could begin at the end. Still another idea would be to start an introduction in the middle of a hymn. If we take the hymn, Praise to the Lord the Almighty, we could start where the text would be, Let all who hear. And combining some of these thoughts, we could also play the first and last phrase of a hymn. We could listen to that example with, I know that my Redeemer lives. Those are some ideas about playing just a portion of the hymn. But another example of hymn introductions that create some more variety and interest would be to play fewer than four parts. The simplest way to begin would be to play the melody only. For instance, Once in Royal David's City. might even be more interesting if we would change the kind of registration we're using. Instead of an eight-foot flute, we could use a four-foot flute. That thin, delicate sound works quite nicely for that hymn. We could even play it on a two-foot flute. If you don't have a two-foot flute on that manual, such as that on this instrument, we could also play that four-foot flute sound an octave higher to give us a two-foot flute sound. Another idea would be to alternate playing melody and four parts. We could try that in a hymn like Jesus Christ is Risen Today, which also lets us explore some different registration ideas. We could play the uh, first part of the phrase here on the solo trumpet stop on one manual, and then we could play the Alleluias up on another manual where we have an eight, four, two, and mixture registration. That could go something like this.
Yet another idea would be to play only two parts. Why don't we try playing soprano and bass only on Dearest Jesus We Are Here. Now you can see and hear that playing those two parts, soprano and bass, gives us a wide distance between those two voices. We can close the gap by bringing the bass up an octave. Or just as easily, we could bring the right hand down an octave. Another idea we could try is to increase the texture as we play the hymn. Play soprano only in the first phrase, soprano and bass in the second phrase, soprano, bass, and alto or tenor in the third phrase, depending on which voice fills out the harmony the best. And then finally, all four parts for the last phrase. We could try that with a short hymn like Glory Be to Jesus. Those were examples of changing the texture. Now we can talk about ways to change the registration in our hymn introductions. We already heard the example of contrasting registrations with Jesus Christ is risen today, contrasting the solo trumpet and the plenum back and forth between the phrases. We could also try that with our idea on Dearest Jesus We Are Here with playing those soprano and bass parts on two contrasting manuals. And we could play our right hand, soprano, on one manual, and our left hand, bass, on a second manual. We can easily make those octave shifts in between phrases that way. And you noticed in this hymn where the first and second phrases are identical musically, it was very easy to play that second phrase down an octave with the melody here on the great manual. Another idea we could use with registration would be to gradually increase the registration, to gradually increase the volume and the fullness as we play through the hymn. Let's listen to that example here with praise to the Lord the Almighty. If we start on a quiet registration, each phrase we can add stops, either manually or by means of pistons, to gradually increase the exuberance and prepare the congregation for singing.
these are just some ideas that you can use and implement in your hymn introductions to help prepare, enrich, and enliven your congregation's singing. Be sure to look at our other videos with more ideas on hymn and service playing. Thanks for watching.